बसमीम् अल्लाम डे स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक इन लेक्चर थ्री स्टूडेंट्स बेसिकली इन लेक्चर नंबर वन एंड टू बेसिकली वी कवर सम बेसिक कंसेप्ट ऑफ इक्वल एंड प्राइम मैथड एज वी स्टार्ट इक्वल एंड प्राइम मैथड सो इन लेक्चर नंबर वन वी कवर सम थोरिटिकल पोर्शन ऑफ इक्वल एंड प्राइम मैथड एंड वी कवर अ टार्जनल कॉन्सटेंट दैट इज सी सो दैट टार्जनल कॉन्सटेंट सी कैलकुलेशन which we did basically in example in lecture number 1 so that will help you to in this today lecture similarly in lecture number 2 we 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 do the calculation for diff we we cover basically different examples that how to calculate kec what is kec and how to calculate it for interior column and how to calculate it for exterior column okay and you see in that examples as well that if there are beams okay and if there are no beams so how to calculate kc so before you watch this lecture i first of all i suggest you watch lecture number 1 and watch lecture number 2 thoroughly if you don't understand those lectures you will don't understand this present lecture similarly you have to watch my videos regarding uh, which is relevant to direct design method so Uh, which are fifteen to sixteen lecture because if you have a concept of direct design method, the equivalent prime method will be easy for you. If you don't know the concept of equivalent prime, uh, the direct design method, because then it will be different, difficult for you. And uh, uh, especially the the use of direct design method for uh, slab system which having beams. I already uploaded okay those lectures how to use DDM when there are beam slab system. the whole steps are as in front of you people what you have to do extract the 3d frame from the 3d structure okay the procedure is simple as we did in direct design method we have we always have a um, 3d frame system like in this and uh, we have to extract a frame like you see here we have a 3d frame we extract uh, basically a 3d frame maybe there may be interior frame there may be exterior frame but we have to run analysis for one exterior frame and one interior frame if there is symmetry if there is no symmetry you have to then extract different frames correct now uh, after extracting then what you have further need to do extract a 3d story from 3d frame for gravity analysis identify equivalent frame members that is slab beam tarsal members and columns okay i explained this in lecture number 1 find stiffnesses as i did in lecture number 2 assign stiffnesses to each member to a 2d frame system remember an equivalent frame method is a procedure basically which explain how to convert a 3d frame into a 2d frame okay how you see in this figure basically we have this a 3d frame in which you see the actual columns the actual slabs as as in our present example we have beams as well okay so here we have beams which is which are running in this direction which is running along the in this direction and similarly here we have beams which are running in this direction as well there are l beam okay and there are t beam okay which are running in this direction so this is actual 3d frame system equivalent frame method convert this actual 3d frame system into a 2d frame system which will be looks like in this shape okay this is a 2d frame that one is the 3d frame actual 3d frame but now this is the equivalent you can say 2d frame system having their stiffnesses okay because you see here in this uh, in this picture these uh, the, there are non symmetric members and now we have to convert these non symmetric mem members into equivalent stiffnesses the equivalent frame method basically explain those procedures okay so this is very important to understand how to uh, basically how to convert such a 3d frame system to a 2d frame system then further what we need to do we have to choose if there is symmetry in heights heights are same 
ground story first and second stories are same so then we have to choose one interior story we do we convert that a story which is a 3d story convert it to, to a 2d okay we will convert this into a 2d 2d frame okay like in this shape and when you find the stiffnesses of this column this slab or beam okay and then finally we run the movement distribution tab okay similarly we have to uh, and then we finally we have to run for the top story because the top story having no further story so that's why we have to run in analysis from the for the ground story and for the top story clear and uh, this is only for one interior frame that is interior equivalent frame then the same procedure will be repeated for exterior equivalent frame but one thing which is very important, let me share you this video. Equivalent frame method considers the structure to be made up of equivalent frames on column center lines in both the longitudinal and traverse directions. The three-dimensional... This is very important. Remember, as we did this procedure in uh, direct design method, we have to choose east-west direction. So this is not south direction, this is east-west direction. Then we have to extract one exterior frame, one interior frame. Okay, similarly in east, not so direct, and similarly in east. -west building direction. is divided into a series of two-dimensional equivalent frames in both directions. The two-dimensional frames, which are centered on the support lines, extend the full height of the building and consist of the columns and the portions of the slab bounded by the panel center lines on each side of the columns. Although analysis of each equivalent frame in its entirety is permitted, a separate analysis of each floor or roof is also permitted for ground. Okay, so this is how they explain that uh, basically we have to choose one exterior, one story, one floor. Okay, we have to choose one floor and one roof. Okay, but if the floors are similar, if there are, uh, you can say, a non similarity, so then we have to use uh, different floors. But almost floors are same. Okay, floors are similar to each other, so that's why we choose one floor and one roof. Gravity loads. In such cases, the far ends of the columns are considered to be fixed. Next. Okay, this is the final. This is exterior. The far ends are these ends of the columns will be considered to be fixed. And here you see the slabs. And in present example, we have beams. So here we have beams. And, uh, negative and positive factored moments for an entire equivalent frame are then distributed to the column strips, middle strips, and beams for the reinforcement section in accordance with applicable building code. The definition of columns and... This is very important that I will share you, okay? And uh, this is very, very important to understand. Clear? Now remember, what we have to do, we have to find this transverse span length okay which we already did in our DDM this is denoted by L2 and uh, we have a span remember we in the present example we analysis we do the analysis uh, the, the example in this direction this is our span uh, uh, analysis direction so this one will be our L1 okay this one will be our L1 and in the present case L1 this is 25 feet so all spans are 25 feet so that's why we just need to calculate case B, case C for just only one span that will be same for the other spans as well. But remember this is in our present example this is our C1 column and this is our C2 column. Because we have to calculate KEC for one exterior column and one interior column. And we did those calculation in lecture number 2. Clear? So uh, in the final stage at the at the end of the moment distribution table when we run that we got those moment values okay those values and finally we will distribute those moments okay into beams into slabs and then the moments which is uh, transport to slabs will be further distributed to column strip and metal strip by using the same ddm technique okay so here you see in this uh, in these strips Assign stiffnesses, analyze the 2D frame which you obtain by movement distribution method. Okay, distribute slab longitudinal movement laterally using lateral distribution DDM. Slab analysis can be done by using the DDM. So, 
Therefore, at the, at the beginning of this lecture, I, 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 I request you to please watch my lectures which is re regarding to DTM method. Okay, so let's start the example. I don't want to waste my time. Okay, this is an example. You are already familiar with this if you are watching my channel videos which are almost related to this example. Okay, now this, the characteristics slab thickness is this much, column size is this much and the beams are 14 by 20 inch deep. Clear? And here we have, we extract, okay, this interior frame from this 3D system and uh, L2 length will be 20 and L1 will be 25. Clear? This is the elevation view, okay, the LC here we see 10.5 and LU will be 10.5 minus 7 inch. Okay, you got LU. And uh, we have to choose one interior story and one top story because ground story and this first story has, are same. Okay, 10.5, 10.5. So that if this is different, for example, this is 12 feet and this is 10 feet. So then we have to run the analysis for the ground story, for in first story and for top story. Remember, and how to do that calculation? I already share uh, lecture number two, which is regarding to if, if these are difference. So how to run the analysis? Clear? Now we choose one story, okay? And uh, the story basically, uh, first of all, I'm I'm uh, choosing interior story and then top story. So these are the joints A, B, C, D, E and first of all we have to calculate case B mean that we have to find out the property of slab beam. So let me open my notes. Okay. Let me open my notes. Uh, this one. Okay. Now you see. Okay. Let me share you some important uh, important video uh, portions of lecture number one in lecture number one basically we we do the calculation for this C so for edge beam we have option number A option B and similarly for a T or interior transverse beam we have option A and option B so you must know what is option A what is option B this is from lecture and how to calculate the C value here I basically do those examples okay so you first understand these examples then go to this present lecture clear then in the lecture number two we basically understand how to find out KEC how to find out KEC we did this example for a slab less beam system and uh, I, I thoroughly explained this okay what is LC what is LU okay and in the case of beam uh, slab supported system how to calculate KEC Okay, what is TA and what is TB? I already explained this in this lecture thoroughly. What is ISB and what is IS? I already explained. And uh, similarly, um, IC, that is the moment of inertia of column. And how to find out basically KEC, KC and KT. Okay, and finally KEC. Okay, so if you if you watch that lecture number one and two, so lecture number three will be easy for you because I'm not going to explain those concepts. Right? So I choose one single story that is this one. The far end will be uh, the column will be considered to be fixed. This is the procedure, okay, which is use equivalent frame method. What is L1? What is L2? You already see. And finally, we have to obtain KSB, the stiffness of the slab B. Remember, this is very important to understand that here we have our beam slab. Okay, this is our slab. Sorry, this one. And here we have beam. Okay, so this combined in equivalent frame method, this combined T section are the, the, the beam and slab are combinedly called a slab beam. If there are column capital or drop panel, so those horizontal members are called as slab beam. So we have to find out the KSB for that slab B. The formula is given KAB times EISB divided by L1. So you already know L1, L2, C1, C2. Okay, C1 is the 
in this side for example if this is your column okay so this is square column c1 equals to c2 but in, in the analysis direction the side of the column is denoted by c1 while the transverse side is denoted by c2 clear so c2 and c1 is this in this case same uh, here you have you have to find out c1 and c2 value and then you need um, table f14 so where is table f14 let me show you that table this is the table i got it from nelson book mcgregor book and here you see c1 l1 values and here you see c2 l2 values in lecture number two basically lecture number 14 i think so i i explained the procedure but remember you see here the values of c1 by l1 is 0 0.042 okay 0 0.042 so here you have to just uh, you see 0 0.05 and 0 0.1 so 0 0.04 which is lies here okay so it exists here and then uh, as i already explain the procedure if you have an excel sheet okay you can do this calculation very simply uh, as i did in lecture number two i already explained for example let me show you zero and this is 0 0.05 clear then i have basically what uh, 0 0.04 i have to calculate my value for 0 0.04 okay let me here 0 0.047 okay 47 0.047 clear sorry 0 point okay 0 0.047 and here i have let me show you the table the, the calculated value is c2 by l2 this is 0 0.05 so we come back to table 0 0.0 0 0.0 this one so it exists uh, in between 0 0.5 8 so here okay it exists here and uh, for that reason we have to choose 0 0.05 and 0 0.1 so here we have 0 0.05 and here we have 0 0.1 clear 0 0.1 now uh our required value is 0 0.05 at clear and uh, now we have to choose the value which is correspond to 0 and 0 0.05 from the table okay so 0 is uh, you see here the, the k if let's say i am calculating the, the me so the k value i explain in the number let me calculate this so 0 0